welcome back to All New Beauty. Today's video is something a wee bit different. I'm actually here with somebody else you may have seen. I'm here with Claudia. Um, she's from Claudia Made This. I have her Etsy shop. I've mentioned it before. I'll link it down below. But I thought it'd be nice to maybe come and meet the person that makes the stuff and see how she does it and all that kind of fun yes. stuff. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I really want to know how you actually ended up making jewellery. So this, I'm actually wearing some of her I've got her necklace on and her earrings. You probably have seen them in previous videos. So yes, I'm actually wearing some of her you know, we thought it'd be nice. But how did you actually end up making jewellery and selling an Etsy and what's um, your story? Tell me, <laughs> tell me your life story. Well, um, it started really when I was at uni. Um, I was just looking for something to do in the holidays really. I thought, I don't really want to go back and do my part-time job in retail. <laughs> so yeah. I just started making a few things and um, I think I was on holiday the first time I saw polymer clay jewellery oh, right. and um, it's just when I got home I did a bit of research and bought some, started trying it out but really it's um, evolved a lot since I started when I was a year. Yeah, it's, um, you probably got I did a lot, of, a, I did a lot of children's jewellery and things like that when I first started and it really for me launched when I finished uni in 2013 in the mm. summer. I um, started my Etsy shop, yeah. um, which was very quiet to begin with, and then um, really it's just sort of tumbleweed since then, and yeah. we've got um, a few stockists now, and... Yeah, because there's present in the lane, I've seen it there, obviously I've seen it there, I've walked down, I was like, oh, I know her stuff, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> that was really nice being able to see it in a shop, which is really good. Yeah, Where else do you stock it in Brighton? Um, I stock it in uh, Fox Duck Vintage in Kemp Town, mm -hmm. and also in Popsicle in Lewis. Oh. And then a couple more sort of dotted around the country, Manchester and things. You no, know, just a few places around <laughs> no. the country. You know, it's fabulous. But yeah, really enjoy your stuff. She makes all sorts of necklaces and stuff with how we look and earrings. I'm doing this while I pull the earrings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're very sort of touchable. Aren't yeah. They? <laughs> Sit and play with them a lot. But yeah, I love, you all seem to have lots of different styles coming through and you're playing with different colours a lot and it's so nice to see just, oh, I haven't seen that one before, I may have to buy it. It's quite nice seeing something different yeah. than everything in the, you know, that you'd see in H&M or New Look is quite different. Yeah, I try and they come up with sort of fresh ideas constantly but my problem is really more so than anything is that I, it's um, the time to make the new things because yeah. of you constantly, every time you make something, you think, oh, I want to make something different now. And then people order things, you have to make that again. <laughs> yeah. But I want to make new things. I want to make a shiny thing over here. Yeah, but so. you clearly must find the time, because you've got new I types do, of methods I do. Out in all sorts. Yeah, lo lots of different ranges coming out soon. And um, I've just launched my website, so I'm hoping Very to get exciting. lots of new products on there. That will, of course, be linked down below as well. <laughs> um, you talk of inspiration coming up with you. How do you actually come up with your ideas? Where do you draw your inspiration from? Well, um, my degree was based on sort of idea generation, really, that's what I'd call it. Um, so I think, I think we should, should be called that as well, <laughs> yeah. idea generation. Yeah, so it's, um, I don't know where I sort of draw it from. I'm also a window dresser, so yeah. I'm always sort of looking for inspiration in sort of retail and what colours are coming through and things like that. So yeah. that definitely influences what sort of colours I use in my work. But um, really the, the kind of the material lends itself to going oh I'll try this yeah. and <laughs> what can I make yeah so obviously you know I do look at um, fashion and what colours are going to be popular yeah. in the next season and things like that so yeah. definitely it's was uh, season driven and all that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. It's especially just, yeah, and it's Pride really this weekend and you have Pride necklaces out as well oh yeah of course yeah, yeah present in the lane stop yeah. sticking my rainbow <laughs> necklaces fabulous um and you keep you talk about uh, you know, people buy your things so you're going to fill the order but you know what drives you to keep on going and continue making things and continue coming up with stuff is it just the sheer delight of going oh I made this isn't it wonderful or is it you know um, do you know I don't know I just I just love when an order pops through that someone somewhere in the world has gone oh I really I like that and I like it enough to buy it and I just think that's that's probably the most exciting thing about having your own shop because I think if I had just a little a little shop somewhere it'd be the same people coming in and yeah that's true enough actually but the you know the fact that Etsy's open to the world that's quite mad to think about actually somebody yeah. in an entirely different country is wearing a piece of jewellery you've made I know and my jewellery is more well travelled than I am <laughs> in Australia <laughs> and America and I think, oh this you know I'm sending off a parcel to some exotic sounding place thinking 
wish I could get in here with it. Yeah. <laughs> you need to get yourself a map and pinpoint where yeah, it's been, yeah. and then you're like, right, I'm try these places and find it. It's great. Sometimes I get feedback, and there'll be, you know, it'll be someone wearing my necklace in some oh. fabulous city somewhere, and you think, oh, look, there's a little bit of me. Yeah, <laughs> just traveling the world. Yeah, how fabulous. That's really cool. And you do lots of um, fairs and things. We've got some footage from the recent children's fair at the open market in Brighton. Yeah, yeah, it was organised by um, Claire Montgomery who runs the fairy tale fair. Oh, so um, okay. I thought it was just going to be a, a quiet little event. <laughs> <laughs> they opened the uh, doors and you know flooded with children. So um, yeah, it was it was a really it, fun yeah. day and all the kids were all dressed up. It was, yeah, really cute. Really sweet. <laughs> That's quite cute. And how long? So you make. Say you made a pair of earrings and I stud pair of earrings. How long does it take you to make these bits to get them ready for fairs and for selling and all that kind of stuff? Well, it's it's you know it's one of those things. I sort of it's almost sort of like a little bit like a mini factory process because yeah. if I'll what I'll do is um, roll out the clay and I cut the shapes, and so I'll do lots in one go. So I'll do like a whole tray full. Yeah. And then then I bake them. So that takes about half an hour normally. Um, so then I'll glue all the backs on and everything. Yeah. So you have to sort of do it in stages and wait yeah. for everything. Yeah, so I, can, I probably would have no idea how long it took to make just one pair. Because so then you have to wait for, the, for it all to dry. Yeah, then does that take, you it must know. take a while to dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to do it too soon. Do you ever have issues in the cold weather? Obviously we're in England, I'm just thinking in regards to things drying or anything like that. Do you have no, no, not really. The only issue with the cold weather is um, the clay can be so hard in the winter that it's really hard going in your hands when you're so trying you to get condition a it. Yeah. <laughs> Although I have heard an excellent tip that you can actually sit on the clay to warm it up for a little while before. That's an so, excellent tip, you know. You, know. you kind of get to warm Make up. Make it and toasty. And yeah. <laughs> And you have a cup of tea and watch yeah. TV. But I also have um, I also have a pasta machine as well, which you can put the clay through. Excellent. And, you know, so flat and so it, yeah, because yeah. you really need to get the clay soft and moving before you turn it into anything. So you've obviously you've grown quite a bit since you started at uni, and you've evolved in how you make things. And mm. like you're stocked in shops, you have your own Etsy shop, you've got your own website. Are you just continuing to hoping to grow or do you have an aim you want to be like do you actually want your own shop or do you just want to be carried in various shops or? Um, I, yeah, the, the idea would be to carry in a lot more shops I think. Yeah. Um, I'm actually doing the British Craft Trade Fair at um, Harrogate in April oh, next yeah. year. So um, that's going to be quite yeah. Bit, bit daunting, uh, yeah. but yeah, I'm really excited to have that sort of exhibition space. That's quite good. Cool. Considering, myself, did you actually yeah. think you would end up at this point? You know, considering no, when you started, I never, I never thought just me making a few earrings at home would it would grow keep so yourself much. Occupied and, and you know, whenever I get if I get contacted by a shop or anything like that, I'm always just sort of a bit amazed. <laughs> what about you, so? Yeah, I, I like your things, Kate. I have good style, so you know, it's entirely <laughs> understandable. I can understand where they're coming from. It's great. <laughs> So we're going to make some bits today. You were going to make, you actually got an order three, and we're going to see how you make some bits and pieces. Yes, yeah, I'm going to make um, uh, one of my nine B necklaces for you, like on your model, like the one I'm wearing today. <laughs> Fabulous. So uh, yeah, we'll go through some of the different sort of bead making techniques. Cool. So should we just get started? We can have a wee chat while we do this. Yeah, of course.
So we've had our cups of tea and you've seen a nice necklace that she's now modelling. This Here's one she made earlier. It's fabulous. It has literally just made and it's still slightly warm it out is, of the oven. It is slightly warm. It's keeping me, uh, keeping me tasty. Yeah. <laughs> um, while we're here, are there, so you can do custom jewellery as well, obviously you've done whatever you'd like today, but people can request colours and... Yeah, um, I've been um, recently commissioned to do a sort of series of necklaces for some bridesmaids, so the, the bride oh. sent me off the loads of colours and just sort of get a bit of a free reign to do something really personal and customised yeah. for, for their outfits. But yeah, quite often make necklaces for specific outfits, people haven't been able to find what they wanted. Yeah, you did mention your mum has a... Uh, habit of sort of oh, oh yeah this dress <laughs> or outfit <laughs> yeah. yes she's uh, I, I'd say Claudia made this biggest fan she, uh, she does have a lot of necklaces yeah fabulous but then she's got one to go with every outfit yeah so she's, she's, a, she's, a, she's a good outfit yeah yeah, yeah. and you get to practice in your mum it's what they're yeah. there for <laughs> I was like, just try these out for yeah. me for a few weeks <laughs> if anybody knows it's fabulous <laughs> she always says, do, do I need, do, do you need me to test those <laughs> yeah, right, and your sister and friends and, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you also do custom, literally custom colours. You've made a nice peachy colour for a range in Australia, I believe you were saying? Yes, um, just sort of, I get sent a little a swatch over of yeah. what sort of colour they'd like, so then I get the task of mixing all the clays together. Yeah, I've made a beautiful um, creamsicle colour for yeah. us. Like, creamsicle's sun. all the rage in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say, I've not seen it so much over here, but... No. Well, they've got it's much nice. more of a tan, so they can probably get away with that yeah, colour a little more. Yeah, don't, don't. I'm even very jealous seeing all the yeah. of my jewellery <laughs> in these uh, hot spots. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, so yeah, that is it. Are there any things you would sort of say to beginners or people that are... You can obviously, everything, all of our links, I've mentioned it a few times, will be down below. So you can always check that out. But if somebody, you know, it's, it's very rare that you sort of would sit down to make a piece like this, for example, because it requires getting lots of different types of clay and whatever mm. else and actually spending the time and figuring out how to do it. But if there was somebody who was interested in, you know, maybe playing a bit themselves. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, um, it's a great activity for with probably well, slightly older children. Yeah. Um, and I would just say, you know, get get some clay and try it out. Just, you know, cause Give it mistakes, a mistakes are kind of fun as well. So. so yeah, does it, you and never you're gonna, know what you're going to get. Yeah, and you can always, <laughs> you know, you'll make something unique and personal mm. to you if, if it's handmade. So yeah. It's quite fun. I remember Just when I was younger, it. I did actually attempt to make fridge magnets using a type of clay that we put over the top of flat magnets. Mm. It lasted for maybe a day and then it obviously just fell off because we hadn't really secured it as such. But it was just so much fun when we were younger. There was a few of us just yeah. thinking about doing it. We uh, thought we'd so investigate. I know, I've never stopped making stuff ever since I was little. It's been, it's been one thing or another. So. Yeah, it's quite fun. <laughs> yeah, never grown up. <laughs> yeah. So if you have any questions for myself or Claudia, I will get her to answer things if there's something comes through, hopefully. I won't get you yeah, to. Sure. I will ask and you can let me know. <laughs> I'm happy to answer questions. <laughs> and she has an in, even Instagram as well. I do, yeah. It's uh, just Claudia made this in one, yeah. one word. I flashed that across the screen somewhere. Mm. If I can get my Adobe Grammy Pro to play with me, we can do that. That'd yeah. Be good. <laughs> but yeah, so that is it. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please like if you liked. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up and check out Claudia's stuff. All that stuff. <laughs> And catch up with you in the next video. Okay. Well, you have bye. to bye. <laughs>